If you've got XL sized hands, the world is your oyster for guns. There are probably hundreds of full size guns that fit your hand, but what if you just have size L hands or even size M? Reality is there aren't any full size guns that make sense for you, that is, until now, with the Sig Sauer P365 Fuse. And purely because I enjoy trolling corporate marketing types, and the Sig Sauer Fuse is lit. Today we'll look at the Fuse and see how it shoots comparative to the Macro Comp and a full size P320. And there definitely is something that you need to consider before purchasing one of these guns, I'll get into that at the end. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, I'm David, and this is the Sig Sauer P365 Fuse, and I know what some of you guys are thinking. I can remember just yesterday when the P365 was a micro compact that was super easy to conceal carry, and now it's big enough to show up to the bar and order a drink. Don't worry, it couldn't fit through the door because it comes with two 21 round magazines as well as the flush fit 17 rounder. It wouldn't fit through the door. I mean, look at it. It's huge. And that's really kind of the point of the fuse is it is a full size gun for people with hands that aren't XL sized. Reality is that trigger reach on most guns is very difficult for people with smaller hands. So the E365 macro frame, which this is built off of, represents a frame that has good access to the trigger, but is still kind of big enough to shoot well and shoot kind of like a bigger gun. And the Fuse is kind of like a full-size compact, if that makes sense, very much like a Daniel Defense H9. It is still very skinny and would make an excellent concealed carry gun, but because it has a rail and all the appointments you would want for a home defense style gun, it's got that going complete with a 4.3 inch barrel. And we'll get into that. And before we do the boring stuff, which is just the specs, because everybody can read websites, but some of you insist I read them to you. I do want to say hello to my dads in the audience and give you this crisp high five. And also I honor you with this. You know, I used to not like facial hair, but then it just kind of grew on me. All right, let's get back to super serious gun reviewer guy stuff. Is it working? How about now? I do want to disclose how this gun came to me before we get into it. Uh, I do like to let you guys know that so you can make whatever judgment you need to beyond this guy's really cool and I wish I could hang out with him. I know that's what you guys think when you watch these videos, but this gun was sent to me by Six Hour to make this video for you guys. Uh, no money changed hands. There's no financial relationship or anything like that. I did have an ammo sponsor for this video. It was Buffalo Creek Ammunition. They make amazingly soft shooting 115s that's super consistent. But beyond that, now you know, I'm not going to pull any punches. It doesn't do me any favors to not share with you my opinion on stuff because ultimately my word is all that I have. So the Fuse is a full-size gun if you look just at magazine capacity and the barrel length at 4.3 inches. It has a grip length that would probably be closer to like a 15 round grip. It does come to the bottom of my palm just like most guns do with a 15 round grip, but because it is the P365 magazine, you get 17 rounds on board if you're not using these ridiculously large P365 mags, that's right. They increase the magazine tube length to 21 rounds so that there are just absolutely huge magazines for the P365 ecosystem now, which is kind of cool, honestly. But the other big features that are different from the other P365s, it has an LXG frame. What that means is it's a laser etched X frame uh, and a script module. So basically you can see this kind of sandpapery texture. It's actually a very good, very grippy texture. The one caveat, and this is true on the other uh, macro gripped guns as well, is the texture stops right where you need it most, which is at the top of the grip. That's where the frame is going to dump energy before it lifts in recoil, but it is a skinny gun, so it's not that big a deal. The slide has the best serrations on any of the P365 guns that I've tried at the front there. These are absolutely fantastic. It has an RMS footprint or compact footprint if you like Sig Sauer speak uh, cut, and this is the Romeo X enclosed. I have another video on that that's dropping today as well. It comes with Dawson Precision fiber optic sights, and these are a little bit taller, so they're likely to co-witness with optics that have a little bit of a higher deck height. So it does look as though the fact that it comes with a green fiber suggests that it is meant for you know optical use, which is totally awesome. Capping off the grip is the magwell at the bottom. Now, what's really cool about this gun is honestly the price tag, which is something kind of new for a premium concealed carry gun. From Sig Sauer, you're used to seeing like $800 or $1,100 or something like this. It's only $730 if you consider the fact that the macro magazines are basically like gold. They cost like 50 bucks. 
bucks a piece for the 17 rounders. And the fact that it comes with three, including two of these 21 rounders, it's got awesome Dawson sights. It has the laser etched grip frame. It has a magwell as well, all for 730 bucks. It's actually a really strong value. And the trigger, you've probably handled a P365 before. It's the same flat trigger that's on the P365s. It's not anything special. They say it's nickel plated or whatever, and it looks awesome, but you know, same amount of false wall, then squish, and then kind of release with a bit of over travel. Uh, it is a perfectly acceptable trigger, if not good for the concealed carry home defense type segment. So shooting the gun, this is the important bit, shooting the gun. First thing out is I zeroed the dot on the gun. And when I was validating zero at 25 yards, I printed this three shot group. 25 yards, zero validation. It still needs to be adjusted, but that's a three shot group. That's pretty darn good. I think the 4.3 inch barrel is getting the most out of the ammunition so that the projectiles are getting stabilized real well leading to really good accuracy. Just kind of shooting around with the gun and shooting it, it was very, very, you know, stable. The excellent traction on the grip with the trigger length being what it is. Having XL gloves, so I have a propensity to want to just get a little bit too aggressive on the trigger and start dropping shots kind of all over the place. But ultimately when I did my part, the gun was there for me. So then I kind of shot it next to the P365 macro comp and a P320 that I have that has the M17 uh, upper and the Romeo M17 sights. So, so you can see the slow motion as I talk through this. The macro and the fuse had a very similar uh, recoil experience. The slide movement I felt like was a little bit more of a dot climb on the fuse than it was on the macro as you would imagine. But at the same time the P320 it's just the grip modules fatter, the slide is fatter, the springing is kind of more appropriate. It just feels a little bit more gentle than the other guns did. So there's going to be a lot of people I have no doubt that make videos on this and say it shoots like a bigger gun. No, it shoots like a skinny nine millimeter gun. This is a bigger gun and it was nicer to shoot. But good engineering can't necessarily overcome the laws of physics and that kind of is what it is. For a little gun, this shoots very, very, very well. Shooting the guns for accuracy, that's where this kind of stood out. As we saw with that three shot group, this thing is super duper accurate. And I was able to print basically the same group, if not slightly better with that go around than I was the contract upper. All right, the zero was for 115 on the P320. I zeroed it with different ammo than I shot it from, but uh, that's one, two, three, four from the P320. You can see that M17 upper is just incredibly accurate. That's 15 yards. Now what's really impressive uh, we'll skip that. I'll get to there in a second. The macro, which, you know, similar uh, grip, similar trigger, all this kind of stuff. You can see one, two, three, four, five. But look at the fuse. What I want you to see is that's actually three holes. That's one circle, two circle, three circles touching. There's four and five. So the fuse was incredibly accurate. As far as reliability is concerned, this is a pre-launch gun. It is a production gun, but at the same time, I haven't had it long enough to run up our significant round count. I shot, I'm gonna have to read the list, so forgive me. I shot Federal Syntec 130 grain PCC ammo because I'm a dumb dumb and didn't double check what Syntec I put in my cart. AAC 124 grain that they totally swear isn't NATO velocity. It absolutely is. Uh, the Buffalo Creek 115, which was super soft shooting. And then Normal 124 and Ingman 124. I also shot four different types of hollow points. You can see what happened. Is the Nosler 115 JHP. Hornady 147 Customs. Is the Hornady Critical Duty 135 plus P. Honestly, that's not that bad. And this is Critical Defense Light. And if the gun is gonna choke, it's gonna be on this. No problems, it's uh, well sprung for that. So the gun will operate with pretty much any ammo you seem to wanna throw at it. And I've already kind of hinted at the, the, the issue, and that is that while this is a full size gun, specifically on the NATO loads when I would shoot this side by side with the P320, the P320 handled the NATO loads much nicer. It golly, those hit hard. It wasn't as an abrupt a change going from the lightly loaded factory like the Buffalo Creek stuff up to the NATO spec 124. I just throw the mags wherever I want. Definitely felt it with this and felt like I had to muscle the gun down a good bit more to maintain stability. Whereas this gun, 
I mean, it was noticeable that it was snappier, but not a lot. That's really what I have to say as far as the warning's concerned. Just moderate your expectation. This is very nice shooting for a skinny, lightweight slide gun. Like, this is a lighter weight gun than this is, and this gun shoots nicer than this one does because physics. This just weighs more. Don't let that stop you. I actually would probably consider carrying it over the macro because it is a bigger gun. I'll have more keel in the waistband if you were carrying like appendix or whatever. So it'll actually like, I love guns that are sort of like a Commander 1911 to carry, and this gun would definitely fall into that category. So, but what impressed me the most about this gun actually wasn't the gun, it is this Romeo X enclosed optic. And I've done another video that you can watch here.